Hello everyone. This is our fourth lecture on the manufacturing of solar cells. So in the previous lectures, uh, we learned a few things, a few fundamental things about how to make a silicon wafer, single crystal silicon wafer. Then we also learned about some uh, initial steps of solar cell manufacturing. We learned that we use a P-type wafer. We start with a P-type wafer and then we dope it with an N-type material in order to create our PN junction. Hmm. And we use phosphorus for this purpose. So we have phosphorus precursors that could be either liquid or they can be in gas phase. And we perform this doping. Now, after that, there is some phosphosilicate glass also, which is, uh, which is um, developed, the layer develops and we clean that. So till here we have learned. Now we are going to learn about the next step, which is known as edge isolation. Hmm. What is edge isolation? So during the emitter diffusion step, you want to actually just make or create the end layer on top of your wafer. But when you place the wafer like that inside the diffusion chamber, the edges or the sides of the wafer also are exposed. So there is some doping undesired, which also takes place on the edges. So I show this with the, with the help of this schematic diagram. Let's say this is a cross section of your silicon wafer. Now you perform the doping. However, since your sides were also exposed, you get this yellow part that is the end doped part. You also get this side doping. Now, what is the problem with that? Well, in the next steps, what we are going to do is we are going to create metal contact pads. Mm -hmm. And when you have the metal contact, what will happen is the places or the points where this end doped material is touching your metal, there you will have a short circuit. And that is what we don't want. Hmm. So what we need to do is we need to remove the edges, the edges that contain the end doped parts. And that step is known as the edge isolation. Hmm. Now, since we need to physically remove something, what is the thing that first comes to your mind? Well, you can just remove it using etching techniques. Hmm. We just learned that we can remove uh, phosphosilicate glass, for example. Hmm. So what we do is we etch the material, we remove the material, either using some wet chemicals or we can use also something called plasma. Hmm. Plasma, which is the fourth state of the material where, where you have a lot of ionized particles, electron uh, ions and electrons. And these particles are sort of hitting onto your substrate and removing some of it, eating up some of it. So we can also perform this plasma etching. Okay, so the third option is laser ablation. So in this lecture, we are going to learn about all these three options. And so the first one is the plasma etch. So as I mentioned, um, it will remove some material from the sides. What you can also do in this case, you can stack up multiple wafers, one on top of another. And of course, their sides are exposed. If you keep them in the plasma chamber, sides can, can be removed. Some material from the sides can be removed. So this is as simple as that. It is known as a dry etching process because you don't use any chemicals, any wet chemicals. We specifically use this carbon tetrafluoride and oxygen plasma combination. So this is basically not a purely um, physical etching process, but there is some chemical plus physical process involved in this. But in any case, it's a dry process. Hmm. So this is how we perform the plasma etch. Now, what is the problem with this? Uh, or one disadvantage of this uh, technique is that we really have to very carefully optimize the etching time. Hmm. Because under etch, or you know, if you don't etch the material enough, then you are going to have, still you will have the end of material and the short circuit. However, if you over etch, even slightly over etching will weaken your wafer mechanically. You know, it can create, create minor cracks, micro cracks inside your material from the sides. And that is something you don't want. So you need to really optimize the etching time. And remember that this is a very thin layer um, because already the end layer is relatively very thin and on the sides even you know the exposure to the the dopant is not so much so you have really thin layers so you need to very carefully optimize your layer thickness according to that you need to optimize the plasma etching time hmm. okay so the second process is 
the wet etching process. Wet etching means using the chemicals. Here we use um, hydrogen fluoride and nitric acid, this combination. Hmm. This is the one that is most commonly used in the industries. Hmm. The reason for that is because we use the same pot and similar chemicals for removing the PSG, the phosphosilicate glass, which we learned in the previous lecture. So now you already have this PSG, uh, PSG removal pot. What you can do is you can also now do this step in the same pot. And so this is uh, industrially, this method is most commonly used. Now what you do is you, uh, you have the square shaped uh, wafers, right? So only at one time you will only be able to dip one side and then rotate and then dip the other side. So side by side you can do the etching, but this is an easy and common process. The, uh, as I mentioned already, the advantage is that you can use it in the same pot. Now the third one is the laser ablation. So as the name suggests, ablation basically means removal of material from something. Um, we are also removing the material during the etching. Then what is the difference? Ablation is a technique which is typically used for cutting something. And so when you want to use a laser and cut something or create a trench in something by removing the material, that is known as the ablation. ablation. Hmm. So the third process will, of course, have a laser. Hmm. So I have, again, used the same uh, schematic. And let's say this is your high intensity, high energy laser beam. Hmm. What happens is we just create a trench using this laser. We don't really completely remove the edges because in principle, complete removal is not required. All you need to do is you need to create an electrical isolation, electrical insulation. So as, as long as this does not create a short circuit, doesn't matter where do you remove the material from. And so very close to the edges, add as close as possible to the edges, you will use a laser beam and you will uh, if your wafer is circular or, or square, you will just very close to the edges, you will create this kind of electrical insulation by doing laser ablation. So these are the three techniques that are used for laser, uh, for the um, edge isolation. Huh. One disadvantage of the laser technique is that it's relatively expensive hmm, compared to the wet edge, for example. And another disadvantage is that it's a serial process. Now, that is a problem with most of the laser processes that they are serial. You know, you, you need to do one after the other. You cannot really um, do a batch process. So this is one uh, disadvantage. But for different purposes, different techniques are used. Okay.